Okay, here is a test of isometric tiles being drawn over actual 3D geometry, which I had just I just stumbled across this over a over reading some saw some stuff I saw on YouTube of some Unity engine work and uh, some old blog posts and I finally figured this out. This is something I should have figured out last year. I didn't really no 3D pipeline until really just last year I started messing with it. But uh, yeah, so we can see here these, these are some some uh, isometric tiles that are nice and pixel perfect. We can try to, because distortion issues, you can see how these things are mapped. So this looks, you can zoom in here, you see that this all looks pretty much straight, right, as it would be before. But if we rotate around, here we can see that these are mapped onto, onto cubes. So they actually preserve the 3D geometry and are, and are um, I guess you could just say scaled and skewed in order to, to subtract out the angle of the camera. So they appear to be um, at a one-to-one -one ratio between the texture map and the actual geometry, right? So for these tall sprites, for the tree and this character here, you can see that they are, it's kind of difficult to actually see, but they are skewed up towards the top so that they appear to be straight when they are in fact quite skewed. These flat tiles too, you can see, I don't know why that that is not working well, that little log. But um, yeah, so this was a, <laughs> This is probably the way that this should have been done. This was, this took me a few days to figure out, which is just because I'm not that familiar with all this work yet. But anyways, it was not that much to, to do. And um, this eliminates a huge amount of problems that you would have if you were doing, if you were drawing isometric tiles in straight 2D, because this, because the um, depth information is actually held in the depth buffer because this is actual 3D geometry so you get instead of uh, sorting behind or in front of, of uh, flat quads like you would normally get you can phase through objects and clip through and stuff like this which is which is great there's no alpha there's no partial transparency in these in these sprites on the alpha channel so it doesn't actually matter what order you draw these in so you could omit an entire shape uh, sorting process doing it like this. But if you do have partial transparency in the sprites, like I'm planning on doing, having with whatever game I make, you would, so you would still use the original sorting algorithm, which was quite expensive, but you can, for all this static geometry, you can sort those things once per, uh, sort them once per, per chunk. You can do a multi-resolution sort where you split the the world into chunks and then sort them as chunks made visible on screen and then just cache away that sorting order and then draw all the static geometry into one batch and then come back and do uh, dynamic geometry like sprites in a second pass and you can make optimizations, optimizations to them too for example by finding what tile they lie in and only sorting sprites in those tiles which is it's not that leads to some problems but it's uh that's accurate enough most of the time, and it's fast enough and easy. And uh, if you look at the other video with the sorting buffer that I made, that actually has some advantages because in cases like this where you have a large sprite, it, it the arm would not actually the arm would be drawn on top of those tiles behind it, which is not physically accurate. I mean, as you can see, that that's physically accurate that, that arm would be passing through. And if you wanted, to, and if you were to be correct in the in the uh, physical element of it, you would just not have the collision allow it to get past this point, which is uh, which is actually not great because you want this. That, that's a large collision boundary. That would I think be sloppy for gameplay. So it's kind of nice actually that you could be able to control the order so explicitly doing it in two D. But again, this is this is so much more efficient on modern hardware. And it was easy to implement. I spent an enormous amount of time 
figuring out sorting orders and it's very it's very difficult to do very CPU intensive and they probably can't run a mobile hardware this can easily run on anything this is very 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 simple of course and um, sides are because the geometry is actually the textures are mapped to actual geometry you, you um, you do create these hard edges. Like for example, on this block here, there should be some actual visible pixels above the top, but those were sliced out of how, because of how it was mapped to the cube. And you could, you could leave a bit of margin on, on the top, which meant that, that the geometry would not wrap around the seam so tightly, which is not necessarily a problem unless, you know, if you wanted to have objects like fade through this, then then that seam not actually being at that location would be a little weird looking, but that's probably not what you're doing with these kind of games in the first place. So it's probably not a problem. You can probably work around that. And uh, there may be, I wasn't able to get the math exactly right, but uh, some of these sprites are, I think this tree is not, both the tree and the guy, the way I needed to skew up this top. Again, this is a bad sprite to show, but the way I had to pull up the, uh, the topmost vertice in the middle of the uh, of the non cubed sprites, that I didn't get quite right. So this sprite is is distorted at some point. You just can't quite tell. But you could you know that could be fixed, of course. And another weird thing is that with these with these uh, players, you notice I had to have the foot distorted out on the bottom like that. That was because of how the uh, of how the base connects with the ground. You can see in the cube that that. Uh, that there is a, a face right here, which is the which connects to the to the ground level, and that would clip off the uh, you know the the feet, for example. And if you kind of overlap there, you can see it. in what are you know typical square sprites that you'd be uh, casting under the shapes? So I had to make a uh, some extra geometry, which is on the base level, which is weird. You know it, that it should be on top of this. I don't know. I don't know why. Again, that's that is the way it is. That should be on top. Likewise, that tree in the back. So, yeah, this was this was probably the way to do it. I may go and <laughs> pull out all that other work I did and just do it like this because it's simpler in the end. But uh, yeah, so anyone interested, if anyone's struggled with that before, this is you know. Take a good look at this view. That is what I was missing. I was not able to find this information easily. Digging around the internet, actually, you think this would have come up early on, but I was not able to get that point that you have to map them onto <laughs> real cubes. I did not think that was possible. It very much is. So, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Okay.